Yo, what be the drip, YouTube? It's your boy, Zach, and I'm back with Zach Reacts, and today we got Secret Invasion trailer breakdown, Easter eggs and details you missed. Now, I want to shout out B. Wells for giving me this idea. I watch these all the time on my own, but if I'm going to be doing trailer reactions on the channel, I might as well do these on the channel as well. So... You know, I, I, I hate it because I love watching trailers right as they drop. I'm, I'm a huge Marvel nerd, so I try not to miss things. I know when they're dropping, and I'm there right away. It's it's going to be hard for me to try to save them for reactions. So, here's what I've decided. If they come out a day that I'm not working, then I'm going to save it for a reaction. But, if the trailer comes out the day that I'm working, I will watch it once. And then I'll come back and react to it a second time, see if I can catch anything. And then I'll watch my good friend Eric Voss. Not good friend, I don't really know him. But shout out Eric Voss. And I'll watch him break that shit down. But this is Secret Invasion, man. I don't know much about Secret Invasion. I know a little bit. But Eric Voss is about to help me. So let's get into it. Welcome back to New Rockstars. I'm Eric Voss, and this is a Hi, Eric. breakdown of the new trailer for Marvel's Secret Invasion. New episodes coming to Disney Plus June 21st. It's Captain America the Winter Soldier in the MCU again, and I think we are ready for- Yeah. Yeah, I, I've been ready. For some spycraft and some scroll searches. Who do you trust? Well, you can trust this guy to break this shit down. Break Facts. Frame by frame for the details you missed. Who has been the scroll in the MCU this whole time? It's probably Rhodey. It's probably Everett Ross. Do you do see Asian clear? I don't know if Rhodey's a scroll. Everett Ross could be. That's a, that's a good theory. I don't think Rhodes is. I think Rhodes is, tr is going to try to be honest with Nick and let him know, like, hey, you're kind of fucked. This guy... I hope he's a scroll so they can blow his fucking head off. You you know this guy. For those of you who you know this guy. Fuck this guy. Clear he's up there for me. Val, yeah, you're up there too. Val? Mm, I don't know. Val seems too like in charge of shit now to be a scroll. So I think Nick Fury might not like the type of shit that she's working it with, but she she could be a scroll. Who knows? Anyway, let's break down this trailer. Here we go. Dude, by the way, I just want to say I love the serious look of this fucking show, bro. And if and I don't know how old I don't know if Samuel L. Jackson if this is gonna be his last show or whatnot, but bro. Fury. Since you've been gone, things have gotten much worse. Back. The trailer opens with Fury walking up to a fenced-in site in the woods. Looks like an exclusion zone because over on the far left, if you look closely, is a radioactive warning sign. That gate has been left open as if this is the kind of place that you should know not to go in there. We Why are you speaking Russian, mate? Um, yeah, it could be. I mean, this is the type of places that Nick Fury goes to, and this is probably going to lead up to a bad guy or a fight scene or some shit. Sign that gate has been left open as if this is the kind of place that you should know not to go in there. We I don't know about that. If you if you need security, especially from someone like Nick Fury, you're gonna want to close that fucking gate. We learned in a write up from Vanity Fair that part of the series will take place in a decommissioned radioactive site in Russia. Oh, that's fire. That's fire. Executive producer Jonathan Schwartz said, quote, scrolls are much more able to withstand radioactivity, and there are a ton of decommissioned radioactive sites within Russia. That that's that's interesting. See, I I didn't know that. I didn't know that scrolls are much more able to withstand ra radioactivity and there are a ton of decommissioned radioactive sites in Russia. Like that, I didn't know that. So thank you, Eric, for giving me this valid information. So now I don't have to go into the show and be confused. Like, why the fuck are they in the radiation in, in Russia? Like... That's where Gravik has set up his base of operations. Who, okay. I think I know who Gravik is. So Gravik or Gravik? Yes, yes. Yep, I knew it. So Gravik's gonna probably be the main villain. Uh, he's Russian, probably. He's the one in the clip you'll see later where he like is surrounded. He's like, there's a bunch of them. All right, so this is his base of operations. This is in Russia, in this decommissioned camp or whatever. Is Kingsley Benadir's Skrull character the leader of a rebel group of Skrulls who has broken away from Talos' back? That's facts. So all of them are Skrulls. This breakaway group aiming to infiltrate Earth for resources. And Brian Mike. Infiltrate Earth for resources? That's not scary. Where, where the fuck is Captain Marvel? Isn't she the one in charge of all this shit? 
Michael Bendis' secret invasion crossover event in the comics, we learn that many of the Avengers and high-ranking individuals on Earth have been secretly supplanted by Skrull imposters for quite some time, leading to a paranoid scramble in which everyone is asking, who do you trust? The Skrulls and- Really? Really? So they could have, so for Secret Invasion, they could have planted Rhodes, Cap, I mean, maybe not Cap and Iron Man because people know that they're dead. So they probably would think it's weird. Oh, Cap's not dead, I'm sorry. But they'd probably think it's weird if they saw Cap and Natasha or Iron Man as a scroll. But Rhodes, Spidey, Doc Strange, like, bro, these people could be scrolls in this show and we have no fucking idea, bro. I don't think they get that deep into Avengers in this, but Rhodes could now be one. Now that I'm thinking about that, the way he said that, Rhodes could be one, Elena could be one, you, you never know. For quite some time, leading to a paranoid scramble in which everyone is asking, who do you trust? The scrolls in the comics are led by Varenki, who had infiltrated the Marvel heroes in disguise as Spider-Woman Jessica Drew, but the MCU- Really? Okay. Who is in a different situation? Captain Marvel revealed most of the scrolls are just friendly refugees of the cruel imperialistic Kree. I I don't I, I never believed that. Plus, I don't think Captain Marvel's my Captain Marvel in my opinion is not one of my favorites. I I will have to watch it again though because I know that the Marvels is coming out at the end of this year in November. So that shit has to be watched. I have to watch the first one before I watch the second one. But I don't I didn't think Kree, I didn't think that the scrolls were always good guys. I've always had a feeling they they were kind of evil. The scrolls were befriended by Nick Fury and Carol Danvers. We saw Talos and his wife Soren impersonating Nick Fury and Maria Hill in Spider-Man Far From Home. Yeah, and if it's this easy for them to get here and to impersonate somebody, imagine how scary that could be for Nick Fury to find school people that, other people as scrolls. Maybe you have to kill them. Well, the real Fury was up on a Skrull space station. It seems like that's what he's beating back down from now. There was an interesting line in Far From Home that mentioned Kree sleeper cells. I thought Kree having sleeper cells was top secret information. Nick. Then we saw a... I do remember that. I do remember that. Sleeper cells. Kree have sleeper cells. So are they throwing these Avengers in these sleeping cells? Or what? Cells. I thought Kree having sleeper cells was top secret information. Nick. Then we saw a scroll in the WandaVision mid credit scene recruiting Monica Rambeau to go meet with, we assume, Nick Fury. And then very briefly, there was a scroll in a tracksuit being detained by the TVA in the first episode of Loki, making us all give second glances to the members of the tracksuit. Uh, he's not wrong. Mafia. And so there's a scroll in the TVA, which could be dangerous. There's... A scroll, there was a scroll at the end of WandaVision. That's not really dangerous. She could have just been there to tell him to meet with Nick Fury. I think that she's meeting Carol Danvers. I don't think that she's meeting Nick Fury. I think that she's meeting Carol Danvers, um, Miss Marvel. No, not Miss Marvel, Captain Marvel. And obviously, you know, you saw at the end of Miss Marvel that Carol Danvers and Miss Marvel switched. So that's all going to connect. I feel like this might connect somehow to the same kind of story in a way, but this is definitely like a Nick Fury type thing. He's gonna figure this shit out. Probably call da Carol Danvers for help, so you never know. Right. Sorry, I'm, I, I like explaining my theories too, so I'm gonna get into what Eric Voss is saying, but I'm also gonna say how I feel because I love this shit. The TBA in the first episode of Loki, making us all give second glances to the members of the tracksuit mafia in Hawkeye. So in the MCU, rather than all scrolls being evil, there's a divide between friendly scrolls like Talos and the more extremist terroristic scrolls like Gravik. That's facts. We also know- for I knew they weren't all good. The Vanity Fair photo that Amelia Clark's character, Gia, will- Amelia Clark. A lot of people love her. I don't, I don't, I can't remember what I've seen her in. But it's cool she's in the MCU. Welcome. They'll be in this radioactive site, and Gia is Talos's daughter, whom we last saw playing Uno with a young Monica Rambeau at the- Really? I knew Talos had a daughter, but I didn't know that it was going to be played by Amelia Clark. That's good information. 
the end of Captain Marvel, we know that Gia has been impatient with Talos' ability to find a new home for the Skrulls. But this detail of the Skrulls being able to withstand radiation is pretty interesting. Could it be something to do with their exposure to radiation on different planets in space, perhaps? Could whatever this radiation source is be the same source as the exposure that Monica Rambeau might have had as a child that led to her odd precondition that showed up on her X-ray scans in WandaVision, activated by further passes through the CMBR of Wanda's hex barrier to turn her into Photon now. And so you're saying that maybe she, maybe the same radiation that happened to her as a kid made her so that she could withstand going through WandaVision or Wanda's fucking hex thing. Okay. So, so scrolls got this, so that, that's why scrolls have been around this radiation their whole lives. Made by further passes through the CMBR of Wanda's hex barrier to turn her into Photon now, and could that radiation also Photon? That's her name. To be the cause of her mother Maria's cancer. We do see a wide shot of this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, and could that radiation also be the cause of her mother Maria's cancer? It could be. You have a good point, Eric. We do see a wide shot of this radioactive site later in the trailer. And just to be clear, this is not Chernobyl. Chernobyl did not have cooling towers like this. They were under construction when the explosion happened, but they were never finished. This seems to be a completely different. Uh, it's not Chernobyl, but still hella dangerous looking. Radioactive site. Also, by the way, Pripyat is not in Russia. It's in present day Ukraine. That said, there may have been other radioactive sites that we didn't know about that just weren't as bad as Chernobyl. Chernobyl's just the one that the international community found out about because it was so bad. That's interesting how. Yeah, that's facts. Ukraine, shout out Ukraine, man. When talking with Talos, Fury goes without the eye patch. Maybe it's a way to show that it's actually the real Fury. Like that's that's possible because the scroll Fury would have an eye patch. So now he knows coming down here, not having an eye patch means he's not a scroll. Smart Nick, smart Eric. His eye scar could be so unique that it's just too hard to be impersonated by scrolls. Why? Yeah. Because it was scratched into him, not by a regular cap, but by a flurkin. So that we saw in Captain Marvel. Yes. Oh, mother flurkin. You okay? Yeah, it's just a scratch. All right, on to the next trailer clip. Why do you think I came back? It's interesting. He blew that up and it's his base of operations and it's a radioactive area. Chernobyl blew up. It's a radioactive area. I see the connection, Marvel. I see the connection. Why do you think I came back? See now, that could be a scroll, Nick. All right, we are in Moscow's Red Square with St. Basil's Cathedral and the Kremlin crowded with a Russian festival as Gravik detonates a bomb in a crowd. It's actually pretty similar to a scene in another great spycraft movie, Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. The Kremlin gets fully wrecked and Tom Cruise has to run for his life. Maria Hill tries to steady herself in the chaos. Seems like the Skrulls are trying to incite an international incident between world powers. The Marvel Studios title card has been muddied up as if to say, we're getting gritty here. We're literally grounding this story and none of it's gonna look like it was shot in the volume. Let's hope so. On to the next clip. I hope so. You're in no shape for this fight that lies before us, old friend. You see, you know how creepy that'd be? If you're just standing there in the middle of the room and then they all just stand up and it's like all, all the same guy? <sighs> that'd be creepy. This is personal. Rest in peace. Oh wait, he's not dead. All right, we jump from Moscow to London, place last saw with some scroll impersonators. Fury's yes. Flash Talos, Hill slash Soren, and Spider-Man Far From Home. You can see Tower Bridge in the foreground here. Yes. So far from home, they were scrolls. We're in London. I'm catching you adrift, Eric. And that's the Tower of London on the lower right. We meet Olivia Coleman as Sonia Fallsworth, a high-ranking MI6 agent who's an old ally of Nick Fury's looking to protect England's national security interests during this infiltration. She's described as, quote, a more antagonistic presence, and she could be working with or against Fury, depending on their desired goals. I'm assuming she's something like M from the Bond movies. But her name, Fallsworth, might make her a descendant of James Montgomery Fallsworth, who is part of the Howling Commandos and Cap and Bucky's crew in the first cap film they did something similar interesting with jim marita and principal marita in spider-man homecoming talos tries to grab gravik in a museum cafe but everyone around them turns into gravik including the server interesting scroll shape-shifting logic there that their clothes shape-shift but not their accessories like their purses and backpacks just you know where do we draw the line there but that i mean 
purses and, and backpacks are an object. I guess clothes are objects too, but clothes are on your body. They can control your body. If you're not holding the purse, it shouldn't shape shift. If they were holding it, I could understand that. But if it's on the ground, it, it's it's going to be the same object it is. You know what I'm saying, Eric? All right, cool. But this portrait gallery has an exhibit, The Faces of Freedom, including figures like Winston. That's so weird. That's so weird. A line there? But this portrait gallery. See, she, it's a girl. It's a black girl. It's a guy with glasses, as you can see. I'll show you with the mouse. Guy with glasses, black girl, normal girl, waitress girl. Gallery has an exhibit. The they all turn into Kravik. Kravik. <sighs> Faces of freedom, including figures like Winston Churchill. Maybe the implication could be that some of these political leaders that we take for granted could have been scrolls, like the. Mm, maybe. The present day politicians seem to be on the show. Fallsworth and Fury come up upon the headstone of. That is true. That is true. Eric, you make some great points. This is why we love you, Eric. Colonel Nicholas J. Fury, which I assume is this Nick, and not like his dad is also named Nick. We know that Nick did reach the rank of Colonel. He told that to Captain Marvel in that bar in Captain Marvel film. I'm just questioning this because we already saw a fake gravestone for Nick Fury at the end of Captain America, the Winter Soldier, with a different quote, that great quote from the book of Ezekiel, referencing his character Jules in Pulp Fiction. But this quote, greater love hath no man, that a man lay down his life for his friend. This is John 15, 13, different book of the Bible. We just gotta wonder how many fake graves Nick Fury has. That's true. He's had to die so many times. Does he keep guns at all of them? Thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this. And I don't know about that either. He might keep guns at all of them. Video. Movies and TV can be great. It charges their thousand license. A few therapists from their next chat. Being it for you. Better who is coming off your first month at betterhelp.com slash get your money eric new rock stars that's b-e-t-t-e-r-h-e-l-p.com slash new rock stars for 10 percent off your first month of therapy on to the next clip very few of us know about the wars fought in the shadows that have raged on this planet see i i want to know what that is i saw this clip i want to know what this is. is are these the sleeper cells that they're talking about where people asleep and the scrolls take their body, <sighs> that'd be fire. Amelia, my gal, my, my gal, how's it going? Do you feel responsible? Yeah, we see Nick Fury opening a container in a mausoleum to get a gun. The door to this thing looks like it has a glowing face of either a wolf or a fox that lights up. Yeah, I think Curie's just got caches of guns everywhere. We get quick shots. That's that's true. He's Nick Fury. What, what do you expect? Maria Hill and Everett Ross. Ross we recently saw in Black Panther Wakanda Forever defying his ex-wife and current CIA director Val to commit espionage for the Wakandans and at the end of that movie broken free by Okoye. So he's a man on the run too. And I gotta imagine in a political espionage. That is, that is facts that is facts and she and 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 valentino's a, a cia agent damn you screwed Everett. man i'm sorry man you shouldn't have fucked up you shouldn't have fucked it like that don't ever fuck bitches that are in the cia in that movie broken free by okoye so he's a man on the run too i gotta imagine in a political S by the way i hated those costumes in wakanda forever Espionage show. The CIA director is gonna show up at some point. Interesting shot here. Some armed that's, soldiers. That's. I, I have a feeling she's gonna be in the show. Definitely. Just push through a car crash site, shooting at attackers, protecting two figures in the center, specifically someone with white hair. I think this is United States President Britson, Dermot Moroni's character, and this is his president. Could be. Potential motorcade after being struck by missiles. We know that Harrison Ford is gonna be playing President Thaddeus Ross in Captain America 4, so I think at the end of the series, something is gonna happen to Ritson. Either he's gonna have to resign due to some scroll related scandal, or he's gonna get assassinated. GF. That could be it too. Eric has some good theories. Glad to have Harrison Ford in this shit. Shout out. This interesting I have a funny story. So my uncle has a Ford truck. It's, it's newer. He's had it for maybe about a few months now. And we call it Harrison because Harrison Ford. And I had no idea he was even going to be in Marvel. My uncle's just a huge Star Wars fan. So chamber that's filled with covered bodies on gurneys with glowing parts plugged into wires on the floor. These are definitely scrolls because we saw this shot with Fallsworth in the last trailer, but I'm wondering if these might be soldiers or super scrolls that are being kept in this kind of hibernative state being prepared to activate in a kind of ground war on sleeper cells. To the next clip. Where are the Avengers? This war is one I have to fight alone.
Okay, next we globetrot to what looks like Paris, I want to say, from overhead. And someone's reading the French newspaper Le Globe. The headline translated to The Avengers, The Battle of New York. It's really weird to see this newspaper now. The Battle of New York was like 13 to 14 years ago in the MCU timeline. The yeah, that's true. Why? Why have an old newspaper? The Avengers have been involved in way bigger stuff since then. That's true. That's true. Uh, by the way, Endgame, best best fight in end, in history in Marvel history is in Endgame. Work was like 13 to 14 years ago in the MCU timeline. The Avengers have been involved in way bigger stuff since then. So yeah. we might be seeing a flashback to the year 2012. Maybe there was a scroll impersonator on that World Security Council that Nick Fury had to answer to in that film. Could be connected to that French diplomat who Ramona sparred with at the UN in Wakanda Forever. Then we see Gravik from the back. Eric, that is a solid point, Mr. Voss. So you're telling me that in the original Avengers movie, he was talking to the council. One of those could have been a scroll. This whole time and no one fucking knew. That'd be interesting as hell. I, 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 I had, I've had faith in this show from the beginning, but I feel like people are going to like this one. Connected to that French diplomat who Ramona sparred with at the UN in Wakanda Forever. Then we see Gravik from the back of the head as he enters his room with these curved beams. This must be in that Russian radioactive site because in the D23 trailer we saw Gia enter the same room and there is Russian lettering on the door. Scrolls are- That's- that's true. I was thinking a cell when I saw the trailer. But now that I'm thinking about it, now that it's at a radioactive site, yeah building something. I'm wondering if they're trying to engineer Bruce Banner's quantum tunnel platform because it does kind of look like that here. Are the scrolls trying to go back in time and change the history so that they could screw their enemies from the beginning? Or are we just looking at a radiation field that could turn normal scrolls into militant super scrolls? That's that's interesting too. It would be an interesting concept to have them build Tony Stark's time machine, but I don't see the point. So I don't know. I'll stick with your second theory for now, but if you're right, Eric Voss, I apologize in advance. Let me know what you think this weapon is, but let's move on. You're the most wanted man on the planet. That's facts. And plus, why would Rhodes be talking to Fury like that? Like, I understand you gotta be honest with Fury, but... I don't know. I feel like Rhodes is gonna be hella sus, and then we're gonna find out he's a scroll. If not... He, it's possible he couldn't be a scroll, but I think he is. I think he is. We haven't seen Rhodes in a minute, so. You don't know what they have planned for you. The Great Neck Fury. Okay, Fury shares a drink with Rhodey, who I definitely think is a scroll. It just kind of makes sense. He's like the one Avenger who's been there since the beginning, who would be kind of fun to reveal as a scroll shapeshifter. But Rhodey... But would he have been the school the whole time or would he have just been a school in this show and someone came and impersonated him during this time between Endgame and now? That That's a good question. Um, I could see that. I could see that. Definitely an OG Avenger being a school. I could see that. But I, I, I wonder if he was a school the whole time. Probably not because he actually hurt himself and he actually had to get physical therapy. So maybe not until now. He calls him the most wanted man on the planet. So Fury might be framed for one of these attacks, either the Russian bombing or the hit on the president. But then this shot of this case opening might be the most mysterious shot of the trailer because the label reads Department of Damage Control with specimen sample barcode in the word cull, C-U-L-L. -L. What's crazy about this is this was digitally removed in the same shot from the D23 trailer. So this was- Really? Really? Marvel playing them tricks on us, man. Really? Wow. This was added later. Cull could refer to Cull Obsidian, one of Thanos' Black Order, who was last seen in the Battle of Wakanda in Avengers Infinity War. He was killed when Bruce Banner strapped his Hulkbuster armor gauntlet on his arm and sent him flying, grinding against a barrier dome until he went boom. But remember, the DODC is a superhero enforcement agency who has shown up in Spider-Man No Way Home and Ms. Marvel and She-Hulk, always trying to gather super tech to keep it under control and in evidence lockers. So who knows, maybe the DODC recovered Cull Obsidian's hand from Central Park after it was separated from Wong using that portal and hacky sacked by Bruce. There just seems to be a plot to acquire Cull Obsidian's powers. I got it. Interesting. Theory about this, I'll get to a bit later.
that that shot. I want to know that. Shot. That shot right there. He has like green on him, so he was a squirrel. Okay, there's a quick shot of a squirrel punching a dude with a suddenly massive obsidian like arm. Also in this section, we see Gravik extending his arm with some interesting stretchy stretch abilities, which looks like an attack on Ritson's motorcade, but it kind of looks like he's shape-shifting into a floor colossi like Groot, who can extend the branches of his arm similarly like this. We might be looking at super scrolls, who in addition to shape-shifting to other people's appearances can also mimic their superpowers. And in Secret Invasion Con- Wow. That's interesting. I didn't know what it was at first, what he was doing, but that's a good I, that's a good point. There are super scrolls out there. Mm. Uh, that's why I think this shit's gonna step up. Who, in addition to shape shifting to other people's appearances, can also mimic their superpowers. And in Secret Invasion Comics, we see this with the Fantastic Four. So this series may be re engineering that, but with established MCU characters. So instead of Reed Richards, we see the stretchy armed Groot powers. Instead of Ben Grimm, we see the big boy Cull Obsidian. Instead yeah. of Johnny Storm, they could use a fiery extremist soldier like that fighter we saw in the Shang Chi Fighting Club. And instead of Sue Storm, maybe someone with uh, some invisibility cloaking tech like we saw the Scrolls using on their space station in Captain Marvel. Then there's a quick shot of Talos with a shot to the chest as his face is half transforming into the green skin of a scroll. Gross. Pick a lane, dude. He does not look like he's in good shape. This could actually be the person that Gia is crying over earlier in the trailer. We might see Talos die in this show. Okay. That would be sad. That would be sad. Okay, on to the last clip. One last fight. That makes me think he's leaving. Samuel L. Nick Fury, man, I, 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 he, he's one of the greats, man. Okay, so Fury is leaving the mausoleum, pops his collar like a badass. I like how the ticks of the trailer music are slowing down like a clock needing to be rewound. And he says, one last fight. Does that mean Fury will truly retire in this? Will he die in this? Can Fury ever really die? The show's new title card divides each letter down the center with a brighter shade of green on the right to show the whole theme of dual identity of this series. I love the official poster for the series, an amazing composition of reassembled stripes of shredded documents showing Fury's face in black and white, but with a few missing to reveal the scroll face underneath. I cannot wait for this series. I think it's gonna be a nice, grounded, mystery, thriller, spy craft show. I feel like this is exactly what we need in the MCU right now. Captain America Winter Soldier is top two MCU for me. So anything that reminds us of that film in MCU Phase 5, I very much approve of. Let me know what you love the most about this trailer and what you're most excited for for Secret Invasion. And a reminder to subscribe to our new channel, The Deep dude, Dive. And dude, dude, Eric Foss, this guy is fucking insane. He gave me all this info now that I have to go process for hours and hours and hours and hours and then, and then just explode in my mind. I can't wait for this fucking show, bro. And I really hope Nick Fury doesn't die. I, I would rather him retire, but it would suck to see Samuel L. gone. But him saying one last fight makes it seem like he might either die or he might just retire, which would be sad. But, hey, he's getting old, you know? But if y'all enjoyed this shit, let me fucking know. And I will definitely be doing more of these. I will definitely be doing more of these. And, uh, yeah, if y'all enjoyed, let me fucking know. And I'll see you on the next reaction video. Always strong. Let's go.